Hello, Troy A. Shadowing Tronics, um, continuing to take part in the Art Sound Off Challenge, uh, unofficial challenge this year. I want to talk a bit about, uh, and I talked about costume design before, um, I want to mix it in with a little bit of discussion of iconography. Uh, of course, if you're doing something set in the real world with normal people, um, and with currently, with actually existing groups, um, you don't have to worry too much. You just much about uh, the design. You basically, you know, you're gonna draw your police officers like you're gonna make your police officers like police officers. Your um, various military groups like military groups. The ambulance corps has a uh, a set clothing design. The fire department has a set clothing design. Um, so you don't really have to create anything there. But we're t we're talking about specifically about. Um, the three genres I dabble in most, which is, well, I, should, I, only, <coughs> I personally only dabble in two out of three, but occasionally I do follow fantasy, but I'm mostly into superheroes and science fiction. When you're creating these creating costume, the costumes and uniforms and whatever you want to call them, uh, there was a little thing about uh, form and function, and also... Um, what you're basing on, like if you're doing a, a military unit, especially in uh, science fiction, uh, you may take a few more cues from actual military. If you look at Star Trek uniforms, they don't really look all that military because even though the rules of conduct and everything are pretty much based on uh, naval service, they don't cons really consider themselves a military unit. They consider themselves space explorers, Starfleet. Although sometimes they do take on um, defensive roles and of course it was the Dominion War um, but unless it's set in the old days like Enterprise and the alternate universe uh, Discovery series they don't really go with a military design they're something to look a bit more casual you know? and that's on and that's on purpose that is by design and meanwhile, that little uh, logo thing, little uh, cross thing there, that um, has become kind of iconically connected to Star Trek, was only supposed to be the desi design for the Enterprise. It wasn't supposed to be the whole symbol of Starfleet. And now, um, retroactively, I really think maybe they try to explain it out in uh, maybe not in the unofit in the maybe not in the official sources, but I think like. Novels or comics or something try to explain it, so it's kind of unofficial. Um, but it's otherwise, it's pretty much been made into the symbol of uh, Starfleet, which it wasn't. If you go back to the original show, you notice when people came from different ships, they had a different uh, logo on their on their shirt. And you notice it's also in the same spot where um, the police would have a military bat, or the police would have their shields shield badge or or military would have different uh, badges on so they took some design elements from the military but made it a bit more casual for another example look at uh, the original Battlestar Galactica I've always I kind of figure the the warrior outfits in classic Galactica look a bit more look almost superhero-ish they're still uniform so there's a uniformity to it but it definitely comes off a little less military than I think the remake has. I'm not sure. Um, I don't really watched much of the remake because it's not a remake, it's a reimagining. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, probably one better suited for articles than Art Sound Off. Um, but, you know, it's not as military design. Some other shows, uh, there's a bit more of a, a military design. Meanwhile, if you and yet in other shows, an outfit is often based on the characters and their personality. Uh, you look at something like Firefly, nobody wears a, really wears a uniform there. But their clothing reflects their functions on the ship and uh, their own personalities. And it's the same thing when you're, when you're doing a superhero outfit. Uh, superhero outfits are... A good superhero outfit is designed based on uh, the character your character, your hero, or your villains, we're going to go with heroes, your hero's powers, 
fighting style and personality. So, you know, that's why, as much as I defend capes, I don't think a super speedster should be wearing one. You know, um, I think maybe that would be kind of dangerous for the Flash to have a really long cape, or even a short cape. Um, Cool's capes look, there, there's a the time and place. Uh, so Batman's fighting style involves a cape, uh, Nightwing uh, used to have a cape when he was Robin, but now his outfit doesn't have a cape yet. Yeah, some versions will have some kind of glider wing or airfoil. Excuse me, it's part of the outfit, but it's not. He's not really his fighting style. It's not what he, he came up with, and a lot of what he came up with came from circus. In fact, superhero outfits came, were have been inspired by circus outfits. Um, Superman's especially the circus strongman. That's where the red trunks come in. So you're looking at the barbells that they want you to look at. And <laughs> so. It was based on the Zerg Strongman, uh, based on athletes. You know, you're not going to, if you look at um, like a gymnast. You know, they don't wear bulky outfits. They wear these, uh, they wear relatively tight outfits so that they can move around in. So it's like just loose enough to be fr to freely move around and do the moves, but it's also tight enough to be but more aerodynamic, aerodynamic and not get caught and stuff. Plus, it's also made of a fabric that's meant to breathe. That's that's my biggest problem with a lot of these foam-padded superhero outfits we're seeing in movies right now. How do you, how does your body breathe that thing when you're doing high-impact fighting? Um, it just looks lame, and especially and it's gotten worse now. If you look at some of the, if you look at um, like they've been sticking Spider-Man in into in the in the Sony Amazing Spider-Man movies. If you look at that, if you look at uh, the Zack Snyder thing. That material almost looks like the stuff that goes on basketballs. And I'm not the only one who said that, but I'm certainly probably been one who said it most often. It looks it looks silly. You know, superhero outfits form function. You can compl you can complain that uh, Catwoman looks sexy, but her iconic outfit is designed for a cat burglar. It's not designed to be sexy. It's designed to be worn by a fit woman who needs to squeeze into tight places so she can rob you. That's it's good design. You know, compared to um, the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel outfit, she's a former Air Force pilot. Uh, she's taking over the mantle of a military of military rank. Captain Marvel was a Kree soldier. Um, so her outfit looks a bit more military, and I actually don't have a problem with her outfit. There's a lot of other things I have a problem with with the current version, but I think the outfit looks fine for what she's for what she's going for. I still like her Warbird outfit better as a superhero outfit, but if she's going to call herself Captain Marvel, I can see looking a bit more military. But you compare it to the real Captain Marvel, Billy Batson, I'm they want to call him Shazam, but where'd you go? Where are you? Um, I'm going to run you back. Come on, you're making this way too much. This is my Captain Marvel, and he, you know he's he's got the the cape design. He's supposed to. Get his powers from from the gods and the out and there's certain but well, you can see that with the outfit like with the bracers and with the uh, design on the cape um, and this was actually one of the inspirations for uh, what I call the original well retroactive because I introduced it in the third issue the original outfit for Captain Yuletide original Captain Yuletide design borrowed a lot from this outfit you know. Something that looks a little more uh, regal than uh, the military. <sighs> oh, um, so costume design goes in line into that, and you know, you, we talk about uh, going to fancy. We talk. We've been, there's a little been a lot of discussion lately about chain mail bikinis. You know, the women to wear that. Can we think about why 
barbarian women in these kind of stories are wearing so-called chain metal, metal bikinis. Basically, they're having the only reason they have a top on is because they have to be for uh, a mainstream audience. Um, if you look at a barbarian's outfit, he doesn't. Most barbarians don't wear male barbarians don't wear armor. I mean, he may some of he man's outfits wear armor, but most of the time he doesn't wear armor because his his he his original design he started out as a barbarian character and then sort of became superhero over time. Uh, but um, if you look at a bar if you look at a male barbarian, if you look at like Conan Conan he doesn't wear a whole lot of clothing so the women also aren't wearing clothing why is it chain mail i don't know but i don't think it's quite the same to complain about her outfit when the only reason she even has a top on is be is for mainstream audiences you could have her going run around with her top off plus the larger the chest the more they bounce around and then you know the same reason you've got a guy where isn't uh male sports person where's an athletic supporter so um it's, it's like i said but these outfits you think about their personalities you think about um their fighting style you don't really think about the iconography but you kind of do um you got to have something that's not something that's going to stand out that's going to you, know, you can if i watch your character, if I watch your show, watch your sci-fi show, if I watch your fantasy show, I want to be able to look this up and say, yep, that's definitely from this series. That's definitely this character. Superman's outfit is um, easily iconic, easily recognizable. If you see that outfit, you know it's Superman. You don't even have to see him in it. All you got to do is, and you don't even have to see the S-Shield. If you just have a, the blue, the right blue-red combination, that's enough. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to go around. Uh, no. If you look at... Uh, if you look at Iron Man... Uh, this, out, this figure really doesn't give you a good look at it. But if you look at uh, some of the Iron Man... The armor that this is based on... It almost looks a bit more like a costume than it does a suit of armor. Compared to uh, the Iron Man outfits. Iron Man armors... That you see today, and even this, this is a, this is a good example. This almost looks more like a costume that does a suit of armor. Um, the suit of armor look is fairly recent, but not not ever between these two. Besides the fact that this two, um, there is this is a bit more icon. They both have the similar kind of faceplate, but um, the classic Iron Man colors are yellow and red. Seeing those aren't colors together. Here's one from the movie. This uh, this looks a bit more. This is a bit more of his iconic colors. The yellows originally were supposed to be the supposed to be flexible iron, so that he could move his arms and legs around. Nowadays we just have joints built into it. Um, yeah, you can kind of see that uh, opposed to the. Actual action figure joints. Um, this is a bit more of a joint design to it. Oh, I'm missing a. There's one of the art things here. Um, and it's the the reds and yellows where you expect them to be. That's uh, why the silver centurion armor didn't uh, collector be. I promise you, if these silver bits were yellow, it might have been a little more acceptable, despite the fact that. Well, you've got the triangle here, but then if you look, look at the comics, they've kind of gone back and forth between circle, triangle, and uh, something resembling maybe hexagonal, not quite, um, some kind of polygon or something. But uh, these and the other, some characters can have a costume change. Batman's outfit has had minor tweaks. Um, Spider-Man's and Superman's you can't really tweak at all because they're exactly because they just exactly work. Iron Man's has been tweaked uh, as technology has, has improved and and things. Um, but for the most part, you know you've got to figure out what parts of a, of your design, especially with superheroes. 
stands out? What makes your outfits look different from any other hero or any other uh, space military? You know, what symbols um, do your, does your company or your uh, group have that separates your characters from someone else's? These are the things that you think about. You not, you're, may not decide what's going to become iconic to your audience, but if you have a starting base in a bit uh, due to you coming from your, your examples and your inspirations for the outfit um, the iconography will find itself and I think I'm starting to ramble a bit here I've but I think I think you get my point you have to your outfits you have to think about form function and how it will stand out compared to every other character and every other um, space fleet and independent person and elf and dwarf and everything else on the on the multiverse. Um, so you you let the iconography find itself, but you need to also c come up with. Does that make sense? The iconography makes itself. You can't choose which parts become iconic, but you need. But when you're coming with design, iconography has to at least be in the back of your mind. Does that make sense? Am I, am I just rambling more than I think I am? Well, all over the 15 minute mark, so I'll put both of us out of our misery. Uh, hopefully, I'll actually be able to write a script tomorrow and be more coherent. Um, because I think. Yes, yeah, this will be on Thursday. So tomorrow's the important one of the week, I think, what I've been building up to um, since Tuesday. So um, if you want to find out more about uh, Art Sound Off, uh, check out artsoundoff.com. If you want to read my articles, which hopefully make more sense than my uh, off-the-cuff talking, this is why I'm going to start doing a script, um, then check out uh, bwspotlight.com. I, pro I promise you those I'm a better writer than I am a talker. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons I do art sound off too, is to try to get better at talking and making my point. I'm not sure I'm doing that too well. But um, we'll see you tomorrow where, hope where I hope to have something written down so that we'll be able to hear it. Because I've been, this is what I, tomorrow is kind of what I've been building up to the past few days. Uh, talking about respect and iconography and costume design and all this other stuff. This is the commentary that I've kind of been building up to. So we'll see you tomorrow, and until then, I wish you all happy creating.